I've been dying to do the black ombre design. I love these. These are a little hard to do, but this product is going to make it a little easier. Let's get started. Okay, Kira Sky has some beautiful color blends, and the reason why I'm choosing this for this particular design is these are blended very softly and they're very easy to fade. So I'm going to do the black. Where is the black? And they have some beautiful colors. Let me just show you. There's some very nude tones, got a very bright green, but I just want to search. Here's the black. And I think they've got several nude colors in here, but I'm going to use Honey Love. Okay, let's put all these away. Ooh, I'd like to try a lot of these. Look at them, beautiful. Okay. So just gonna get my little holder. Get these ready. I did notice that they don't have the labels on the bottom or anywhere else. So if you've got the label on top, don't mix up the lids. It's no big deal when it's black, but when it comes to the nudes, it might be hard to find out which nude it goes to. Now these nails were already prepared. I actually did a video on how to prepare the nail plate to avoid lifting. And I'm gonna use that set of hands for this application. Now ombre, is in itself hard to do. And when you work with black, it's even harder. And the reason why it's hard is because black is so strong in color and it has a lot of residue and it's harder to fade. Any darker color is a little bit harder to fade. And black, of course, being the darkest is actually quite hard to fade. But when you do it right, it's so beautiful. I'm just putting my form on and making sure that it's good. One of my favorite designs is the almond nail with an ombre look. It could pretty much be ombre anything, but that's one of my favorites right now. So, just got my little form on. I have to apologize for all the car noise. We've got some construction and we're now the thoroughway for all the extra traffic. Drives cameraman insane, because oh, he's a yeah. sound guy. The detour they've made puts everybody around right by our studio, so. We have soundproofing, but not that much. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. Doesn't bother me so much. Okay, so I'm gonna get out my liquid. This is the liquid monomer. It's acrylic to help make this design. And I'm gonna get my clear out. I don't really need the clear to the end because I want everything to set first, but I'll just get it ready. Now, when you're working with black or any dark color, like a deep green, red, brown, black, you wanna do all the dark color first and then clean your brush and then go for the light color because there's a lot of residue that'll be the powder in your brush that can turn the lighter color quite ugly, muddy. So when you're building an ombre, there's three layers. There's the black, in this case, black on the end, nude near the nail plate, and then the clear capping over top. And each stage has to be done very specifically. So when it comes together, it creates that beautiful soft look. So we're gonna do the black bead first, and that is the free edge working inward. Now, sometimes I've noticed some technicians will bring the black and leave it a big hard line just like that. You can do that, but you're gonna have to make sure then that your color coat, whatever color you're bringing over top, is going to be thick enough to cover that solid line. So I like to fade the line a little bit. And with this black, it's actually a little bit easier to fade. A few little tricks is you can get a little more liquid and soften that edge. But I don't like to bring too much black near the cuticle because it just can start to look kind of dirty and muddy. I am also trying to shape my almond. I'm gonna go kind of long because I'm just in that kind of mood. You like long nails. I do. 
although it has been really kind of nice for these few minutes between videos to make a fist. I can't make a fist with this. You never know when you might need a fist. I don't like the sounds of that. <laughs> Now it's a little easier when you're doing somebody else, of course, because you're looking at it at a completely different angle. I don't have to worry about the end so much. We can shape that up later. But I just want to make sure it's thick enough. You want this quite thin because we want to bring the pink over top, not to the end, of course, just in the stress point, just in the high arch point, the apex, where it meets together. But I'm going to bring a little bit of black in here because I'm gonna bring it in and fade it just a little. I wanna make sure I have ample black up in there. So when the pink is faded, it's not fading into faded black because if there's parts of black missing, it's gonna look horrible. How far to bring the black up really is a personal design taste. Because wherever you bring the pink, makes a big difference on the extension and the look of the nail plate. That's probably enough for me right there. Now, if you're starting and trying to learn the ombre and you're working on a person, as a nail technician, you may not have time to practice all the time, so sometimes you use clients as practice. I would start with the fingers you don't see so much like people don't focal point on so much, like the pinky, sometimes the thumb. But by the time you get to the other fingers, you might have learned quite a bit in that procedure. So when you get to the index finger and the next two fingers thereafter, it's a little bit more visual. That's a nail technician trick. <laughs> okay, so the big thing too is I will wait until that black is dry before I put on the pink for two reasons. My brush is full of muddy. I could switch out brushes, but I've tried that and I can never organize it enough. And I want to make sure this black is dry. If I go ahead and put my, in this case, like a nudie pink on top, I could blend the two together and move the black out of place. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave that guy and I'm going to move on and I'm just going to go ahead and do all my blacks. I was on a forum the other day, I forget which, I'm on a bunch of them on Facebook. I can't remember which one this was, but somebody was talking about, she was a nail technician actually, and she has a daughter, and I think the daughter was only 12, and she just wondered if it was okay to do a 12-year-old's nails, as in acrylic. Do you mean to do the nails herself or to get the nails on herself? No, the mother wanted to know if it's okay if she put, or if a 12-year-old should get acrylic, like go to a professional and have her nails done. And it was an interesting conversation watching everybody's opinions. And it was amazing how many nail technicians felt that 12-year-olds shouldn't. And one person even suggested that the nail bed's not properly formed and it could damage her nail plate. Mm -mm. Our nails are properly formed. That's okay. There's, there's not like new baby nails or anything like that. They're ready to go. You can put acrylic on it. It's just whether it's a lifestyle thing. It's also whether you can get down to the salon and get them filled. In this case, it was the mother was a nail technician. I personally think it was kind of a neat moment where a mom and daughter could share that together and she could, you know, spend time with their daughter and something they have in common. So as far as age, there is really no age requirement. As long as the nail is healthy and happy like anybody's nail, I honestly don't see anything wrong with it. Now, if I was a nail technician, which I am in a salon and a customer came in and she was 12 and she wanted her nails, I probably would get the permission from the parent because maybe the parent wouldn't really want them to do it. It's not a permanent thing like a tattoo, but it is, um, you know, you put them on there and I would get the permission from the parent to make sure that was okay. It's an ongoing question. It's a good question.
think I'll go back and complete the thumb just so we can make sure that we're bringing the black high enough and not too high. So let me clean off my brush. Now you can dip it in acetone a little bit. Yes, of course, it would dry out the bristles. It's not great to put your brush in acetone all the time, of course, but my whole career I've done it all the time and I've never found it to really harm a brush unless I left it in there a lot, it would dry out the bristles, but I always condition it in my monomer and I always leave it in the bristles when I leave it overnight and I've never had any issues with it, but acetone can just totally clean it. I have used brush cleaners before and maybe it was a bad experience that I had, but it left a bad taste in my mouth because it turned uh, the product that was in there kind of yellow. You shouldn't and... put it in your mouth. That's the problem. What? And you had a bad taste in your mouth. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm leaving now. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> no, you can't go anywhere. Because <laughs> if you're not here, they can't see it. <laughs> so you can see how dirty my paper towel is. Look at this. See how black can be very sooty, right? but just turn it over because you don't want that black to get onto your brush to contaminate your pink. I think you just got it all over your nice towel though. No, because I have other paper towels underneath. Oh, okay. Yep. I've learned that. I've ruined so many towels, you guys, but it was worth it. So when choosing a pink or a nude, the color that's going over top of the dark color underneath, in this case, black, you want it to be on the opaque side. If it's completely see-through, you're gonna see all this mess that I just left there. So you want it a little bit more opaque so it can cover the black ickiness under there. So this one that I've chosen does have that nice opacity to it. This is where the fade truly comes in. Actually, that's a bit big. I think I got a little excited. He's a little bit big. I'm just gonna get a smaller one. So you can see the opacity of this stuff is quite nice. And that is going to be our fade. That is what we're going to see coming over top of the black. So that is mostly what's working for us in this fade. And then you have to decide how far down you're gonna come. And of course the pink nude represents the nail plate. Okay, so you can see how crooked that is. We're gonna to try to straighten that out now. Make it look like a nice nail plate fading into the black or just softening into the black. It's up to you how short you wanna make that nail plate look. can see some residue over here. I'm going to see if I can cover that up with the nice pink. Interesting. This nude has a bit of gold tinge in it. It looks like that, at least when it's blended with the black, it does look, mm -hmm. it looks like gold on the black, actually. It does. It's very pretty. I think I want my nail plate to look a little bit longer. The index finger is a much smaller nail, so I'm going to take a much smaller bead. Let's focus on the cuticle area, and I'm just going to place that bead right at the cuticle, and I'm going to just make sure that the cuticle is nice and flush and even, because the color is so strong, you want to make sure that it is solid near the cuticle before you start fading. Mm -hmm. And then we can add the fade later. So let's make sure that cuticle is happy. It's easier sometimes to attack it in little sections as opposed to just kind of doing it in one bead. 
especially when you're talking an ombre. Okay, so that looks horrible. So we're just gonna get another tiny little bead and come over to this side, place that right over top of it, get rid of that powder, and bring that right out on the side so it's nice and smooth and solid in color. And then we can start to fade this guy up. This color, this nude, has a slight bit of gold. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's quite pretty. You don't really notice it until it fades over top of the black and then the gold kind of comes out. It's almost like a very fine glitter. Yeah, yeah, it's very gentle. Yeah, I can see it sparkling a little bit. Mm -hmm. So when I do the nail plate again, I, I want to have the nail plate where it has a little bit of elongated and it kind of drips off into the center part a little bit narrow because I don't want it to be a wide uh, fade of pink. I want it to look quite delicate and dainty, like the nail pink part is coming up a little bit. That's where the trick of the fade is. It's a lot to do with the pink. I'm going to look at it different angles. Yeah, that to me, I want the pink to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to bring it in a bit of a... See what I mean? Not so much on the sides, but more in the center. Not too long and fading it off. And then if you don't like it, you can also bring the black in and fade some more. Does it get very thick if you keep doing that though? Um, well, I've done it so thin. That's a good question though. I've done it quite thin, so it really won't. can see where it's not really gently faded there. So I'm gonna bring in just a tiny bead, pink, right there. Yeah, these are very, very tiny beads. You know, in the camera, I've noticed that it really does look a lot bigger. So it makes it feel like it's quite thick. I've noticed that with a lot, but it's actually not at all. I think it's because I'm getting such close shots. It is. And that looks like a line. I hate that. So I'm just going to soften that a bit more. I'm having more difficulty with this one because it is a smaller finger. You're trying to create that design in a smaller area. How's your burn feeling on your finger, by the way? It's fine. You know what? After that video, it, it didn't hurt anymore at all. I think I still want it to be more soft here. I don't like what's happening right here. It's probably not. Now this point can be a little bit higher because this is your apex, so it's okay for it to be a little bit thicker here. You want it to be. That is part of structure. Now I'm going to even bring in a little bit of black. I don't want the gold to reach down too far, but the gold is extremely fine glitter. So I am just going to bring it up a little bit. Just a very gentle, tiny little bead. black this way. Yeah, that's a bit better. I'm getting the black out of my brush. You see how it's kind of dusted on there? I don't want that. So I'm going to try to take it away with my brush. Won't you just file that away though? I could. Well, because I'm going to clear cap it. 
right? So if it's bugging me, I'll just wait till that dries a bit, and then I could just give it a dusting with my file. Okay, I'm gonna form them all up, and then I'm gonna finish them up. Okay, now I finished the black and the nude. The black being first, the nude coming over it just a little bit and fading out. Now, once that design is complete, you wanna make sure it's completely dry because when you do the clear cap, it's to protect all of it. And the reason why I do do a clear cap on top is because if I was to just file, and you could, if I was to just file it, I may take away some of the nude, which could expose more of the black, which could upset the balance of the design that you're trying to create. So I like to do it this way. I finish it and then I clear cap. So that's what I'm gonna do. A little tip, make sure your brush is completely clean of all that black and nude. Now we just did the nude last, so you'll make sure there's no sparkles in there. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna pick up a bead of clear. gonna place it right there and you could do a giant bead and do in a one ball method or you can do it in 10 or 20 little beads whatever makes you feel comfortable doing a one ball method is definitely convenient if you can do it but if you're not ready to do that yet it can be very very awkward to try to move that around before it cures up on you now this bead is very forgiving because you're just gonna sculpt off, file off whatever you don't want. So you just wanna put a nice bead on there and make sure that you've entertained the whole arch and the structure. This will be the protecting layer. This will make sure that it doesn't break. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just put a nice clear cap on all of them. going to e-file and sculpt these into that perfect, beautiful almond shape. Okay, now I've done a lot of filing and I've got them almost shaped up. So when I'm shaping almond, I find one of the most effective ways to making sure you get that total clean almond shape, because you gotta sort of divide the nail in half and make sure each half matches. The best way is to put it up against a light source. So in here in the studio, I can put it up against one of the lights and it creates a silhouette that I can see the sharp, fine edge of that almond, any shape actually, but almond I find very effective. If I'm watching TV and do nails, I put it up toward the TV when it has a light image on the screen. And it really helps being able to shape that almond shape. So now I've got these pretty much shaped up to exactly where I want and I have smoothed the surfaces. And I look at them every angle. This also works when you do it in front of the TV for this angle as well, when you're looking down the barrel. You can really see if you're uneven on either side. And you can do that with each and every nail. These look really good, I'm happy with them. So now I'm just gonna clean them off. You use a little bit of alcohol to get rid of all the dust. What kind of alcohol is that? It's just store-bought alcohol that you can get right from the drugstore. Rubbing store. alcohol? Yeah. Is that what they call it? Yeah. Hmm. You want to use a high-quality alcohol, and you get those from your drugstore. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a top coat or you can put a clear gel top coat, anything you want. I just wanna put a clear coat on it. I will say I didn't plan on this, but that nude has quite a gold sparkle. I did not know that it had, and it's really coming out with this top coat. Sometimes you never know until you 
do something like this and you're like, whoa, that's got a hidden and beautiful element to it. Now, sometimes when I'm doing top coats with a polish, if I'm putting it on top of acrylic, I will often, well, probably always, put two layers of top coat. Reason being is the first layer of top coat with polish does seem to absorb the acrylic a little bit and you sort of lose a bit of its shine. When I'm doing clients, I'll do one coat on all of the fingers, and then by the time I finish that, it's dry enough I can go back and do the second coat. So as I'm blabbering away, it is starting to dry a little bit and soak in, and you can sort of see it almost as a little bit of a matte finish. So I'm gonna put my second coat right on top. The trick with nail polish is make sure there's plenty on your brush to glide across the surface of that nail but not so much you flood the cuticle. Polish will stay on acrylic a lot longer than on natural nails because it doesn't have any of the natural oil to push it away. You're losing your polish in a couple of days. There's nothing wrong with you or the polish. It's just the natural oils are kind of repelling it. There we go. One of the hardest sets to do, but one of my favorites. Let's check out the reveal shot. As a nail technician, whenever you do a set, you always examine it for things you could have done better and I see lots of things I could have done better but I do like the way it turned out overall. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.